So that's yeah. so, so, so some huge, huge players on. Yeah, we've worked on some uh, really big brands. We've worked on Toyota and we've worked on big Procter & Gamble brands. And, nice. Yeah. Well, can, can you give us any kind of examples of how you've helped them? or? Yeah, so uh, it's, it's still one of these things where our success is a secret, our failures are public, I guess. But um, we, we, okay, so we specialize in two things, really. There's two types of language when it comes to marketing. It's, there's what the brand says and how they say it. Uh, and it's also the other side of that coin is, of course, what consumers say and how consumers speak. Now, when I say language here, I mean things like not only what people talk about, but the style of language they tend to use. So are they expressive? Are they emotive? Are they colloquial? Are they formal? Um, do they use certain phrases which are for, uh, which could be a signal that they're part of a certain community? Right, so, so it's more than just words, it's, it's contextual stuff too. It's, we're completely driven by context. So, um, and the ability to compare language drives that context. So we can compare on multiple dimensions, I guess. So I'll give you some examples. So um, we, we somehow we've done a lot of work on cosmetics. So um, one of these exercises showed that if you look at the review language in the United States of cosmetics, and you compare the language style of reviewers by age, you reveal some interesting things. So for example, um, if you're 25 and younger and a woman in America, you're far more likely to say you wear makeup. If you're 40, 45 and older, you're far more likely to say you apply right. makeup. <clears throat> now, this could be nothing or it could be everything because this is typical of an unknown significant language trait. So the brands, you wouldn't even know to look for this stuff. But if you're a cosmetic brand and you're trying to sell to 20-somethings by saying apply our product every day for wonderful results, you're getting it really wrong without even knowing it. Right. Okay. So that's kind of a cross-age group. So as I said, it's those kind of slight nuances that can really make a difference when you're trying to sell a product. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, the thing about language is that just as in the, you know, the real world, if you mirror someone's language style or someone's communication style, they are far more likely to engage with you. And that's um, exactly true in the, in the virtual world as well. So if you digitally communicate with a consumer in a style which is more like their usual communication style, they're more likely to um, get a connection with you. Mm. Um, the trick is understanding what these important trigger trigger points are in language. So that was an example across age. Um, there's other kind of classics. There's a relevant one at the moment. So we also done quite a lot of work with Microsoft Mobile, the, or Nokia as well. As I it. saw, yeah, I saw an article on that. Yeah. So um, the kind of things which spring to mind there, that one of the most interesting ones was uh, the launch of the Lumia 1020, which was a device with extremely good camera in it. And part of the marketing campaign was targeted at uh, digital camera enthusiasts. So if you've got a DSLR. Mm -hmm. And so the marketing campaign went along the lines of, you know, take awesome pictures with the Lumia 1020. Well, if you do the right comparison and analysis on the DSLR forums and review sites, you will see that that group of people tend not to say they take pictures. What they tend to say is they shoot images. Uh -huh. So if you're a cool photo, if you're into this topic, you shoot images. You don't take pictures. So uh, Nokia, as it was then, or Microsoft Mobile now, saying take pictures to uh, this group of people is actually desperately uncool without knowing it. Um, and it, it's it's relevant now because if um, anyone who walks around London, for example, can't help but see the Apple. Uh, poster campaign at the moment where uh, they're displaying photographs of people, of, of the photos people have taken with iPhone. And underneath, the, I don't know if you've noticed, but underneath it says shot on with iPhone, iPhone 6. 6. Yeah. It doesn't say taken with iPhone 6, it says shot with iPhone. And that's a very deliberate wording. 